All right. Do you want me to intro you? I know we have a small group here, but I'll go ahead and do my spiel. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to our streaming media on this beautiful Friday the 13th, one of my favorite holidays. Um, Sarah Bosler, our public services librarian, and that is just a title because, believe me, she does so much more than public services. Uh, she's going to walk us through how to work with the library to get streaming media for your classes and show you some tips and tricks and some like little secret ways to make sure we get the most for your students. I will be monitoring the chat. Um, and if you have any questions, I mean, this is such a small group. I think Sarah, you're probably okay with people just talking so we can do that. Or if you wanna put stuff in the chat, I will be monitoring that and I can answer some questions as well. So Sarah, yay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, you guys are sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, well, the reason why I wanted to, uh, to kind of share some of this information with you about streaming media is because uh, there's been a significant increase in streaming media uh, use on campus since the campus went into a remote uh, learning mode in March. So I think because we've had a lot more questions about it and a lot more activity and usage, that it was a good opportunity to just kind of introduce um, the resources that we do have for those um, who haven't used our um, these streaming resources before, and also some ways to kind of embed them and in integrate them into instruction and especially into Canvas. So um, I'll start with the, the library homepage. That's kind of where we have our home base for all of our resources. And so we do have some different ways to contact us if you have questions about this session um, after watching the recording or, watch or, or participating with us live. Uh, so from our library homepage, which you can get to from the main campus homepage at the citruscollege.edu, uh, we do have our uh, contact information here on the right. So we are always updating our, our hours as well, but you can always get in touch with us through chat or through email. Um, this is our generic email, our library at citruscollege.edu, but you can always um, email myself at sbosler or um, Elizabeth Cook, who's also our other full-time librarian. So she, either one of us can also individually answer those questions as well. And then we also have chat. So we do get a lot of questions and that's what we've been using a lot recently um, during the pandemic with um, reaching out to students through text and chat and email. So we also, you know, can work with students individually through Zoom. I had a student this morning that wanted to Zoom with me about a, a research paper she was working on. So some students are comfortable with that, some of them aren't. Same thing with faculty. <laughs> um, so if, if you want to meet like this, this is fine, or we can do it a different way. So whatever works for you. Um, you can also connect with us through social media as well on our website. But our hours are always going to be updated here on our library homepage. So as those change or have some small nuances, we'll always be updating those here as well. So if we don't get in touch with you, you know, live, then we can always we always pick up any of those questions the next the next um, time we're open. So I do have a, um, a research guide that I've created for streaming media, specifically with faculty in mind. And so I'm gonna be using that as kind of our, our jumping off point today. And it's also something that you can come back to and um, get more step-by-step -step detail instructions about what I'll be sharing with you today in terms of the recording. So that is available under our research help section here under guides by subject. That's where we put all of our guides um, that we work with classes. And I know some of you have brought your classes uh, to the library <laughs> or even uh, worked with us remotely. So you might be familiar with our, our research guides. So under guides by subject, we have um, all of our different um, subject headings. These are all representing different courses. And so this is kind of a generic sort of library resources subject. It's not really subject specific. So this can be found under library resources. And then we have um, our faculty guide to streaming media here. So that's how you can get to the guide, but I will include the, the link to the guide is also in the recording as well. And as Elizabeth mentioned too, if you have questions as we go along, you know, feel free to stop me. You know, if you know me, you'll I'll just like go and and so if you have, I'll try to remember to like pause for a moment. And and also, you know, if you've used any of these resources too, and you have different ways that you've used them or different um, ideas um, or questions, you know, we welcome your your input as well. So this is actually a guide that I, um, I created that was adapted from a guide from San Francisco City College. Um, there's a librarian that I worked with there uh, on, um, we presented a workshop together for the, the Council of Chief Librarians, CCLC, which is our California Librarians um, 
organization that we're a part of. So um, I do credit her in terms of all that resource. Her name is uh, Michelle McKenzie. And so there's a link to her guide here and attribution to her guide. So you can kind of see where this was born. So I do want to definitely give her credit here. So this is kind of just the introduction. I'm not gonna, there's too much in this guide to cover in just one session for today. So I'm really only gonna focus on finding resources, what we have, how those work, and then also uh, primarily embedding them. Uh, maybe a little bit of clipping, but probably most, mostly just finding them and embedding them. Um, there are all kinds of other topics related to this in terms of um, copyright information and digital licensing and, and acquiring digital licenses and hosting them. And, and that might be something that is a, a separate uh, topic later on. Yeah, cool. So, so this is kind of just an introduction. And um, in terms of how students access our, uh, or, or anybody accesses, students, staff, or faculty access our, our streaming media is either from the library homepage or from our, um, our catalog. So just in terms of, of general information and, and kind of what I was discussing before in terms of usage stats, I want to share some, some statistics with you that kind of inspired me to, to, um, to put this together. Um, so, but this, this individual page just kind of speaks to um, ways that, that you would access this the same way that students and staff and faculty log into Canvas is the same way that they access all of our databases. And many of you probably know that already, but if not, that is something that you would be able to access here. Uh, we also have just kind of our general statement here in terms of um, providing, you know, quality, relevant, inclusive media um, that supports the curriculum, it supports faculty research needs, if it's something that you're individually researching or if it's something that the students are searching, and that we really have the diversity of our students and amplifying those voices and perspectives of unrepresented groups. So one thing I really like about the collections that we do have access to is that they do a really good job of, of kind of amplifying those voices. So that's part of our mission in the library as well. So this first section here in terms of finding videos, we do have our OneSearch. Oh, you know what, before I was gonna go into that, one thing I did wanna show you real quick is the, is the data before we go into finding it. I grabbed some, uh, we, we've been spending a lot of time in the usage statistics area of our, specifically our Canopy collection. Um, I, I'm going to talk about the different collections today, but I'll just use this example from Canopy because it is one of the, the subscriptions that we do have access to that is kind of, how do I say it? You know, like going wild, <laughs> kind of like a little, like you think you've got everything like in a little box and under control. And this one is a little bit more, um, has some flexibility in it. So we have had Canopy uh, streaming video for, for about five years. So this is actually statistics from when we first started it. And this arrow here kind of points to, to one column that I think is, is really reflective of how the, the usage has changed. So this is just academic here, uh, academic years that are listed here. So we started out 500 plays for the first year. Great, plays is just uh, one time someone viewed it for, in, in terms of this model, it means that someone viewed it for at least 30 seconds, I think, you know, so it actually counts it as a play if it's over a certain number. Um, then the next year, we, we nearly doubled by having 900 uh, plays. And then on the next year, it went to about 1300. So it's rising a little bit. This is 1718. Then we went to 3000. So you can kind of see this, this doubling pattern here from 2019 to 2020 and part of that is when we went into a remote situation we did go from 3,000 plays a year to, to 10,000 almost 11,000 so it almost went from doubling consistently to tripling and so this is a statistic from July just this academic year to today and we almost have is about half as what we did for last year and we're only in five not even really five months so you can kind of see we're on this, this path of, of usage. And the reason why I point out this usage is this is a database that's unique and, and it's different from our films on demand database that we'll look in, into where we pay one fee for films on demand, one um, subscription cost per year. And with Canopy, we have um, a different kind of pay model. And that's actually changed over this five year period, but we do pay for pl per play at this point. So the reason why this is a little bit different 
is because we can't anticipate, <laughs> we can't budget as easily as we can for films on demand when we don't know how, how much the usage is gonna change. So that's why it's kind of something that we're looking at really carefully and trying to figure out the best way to keep it sustainable so we can keep it because there are a lot of really great resources in Canopy that we are um, slowly getting able to having some issues affording. So, so that's kind of why we're talking about this today. So it also can bring people's awareness because I think most people are not aware that we do pay for play per play at this point and that that isn't any fault of anyone for assigning it. Um, we just need to figure out how to make that work best for everybody. So in terms of finding these resources, one way to do that is through our OneSearch. And, and OneSearch is, a, is essentially a new uh, library services platform, kind of like our library catalog. And since uh, last January, in this, this January 2020, Citrus was among 110 um, participating California community colleges that um, participated in this year-long transition to a common platform. This platform is also used by all the Cal States and also most of the UC campuses, this OneSearch platform. Um, so, so when everyone uh, searches this catalog, they get resources from multiple sources of our databases, as well as our print collection. So it's something that's very valuable. It's, it's kind of new for us. And that's mostly probably how people would be searching for the film collections. However, it is not completely um, inclusive of searching everything in all the databases. So if you've brought your classes in to work with the librarians, you may have noticed that we go directly to a database. And that is sometimes because the one search does not always cover everything. And we will I'll kind of show you how that works here. So I'll just do a, a quick example on um, how to search, which is, might be something that if you send your students to go to the library homepage and find a video, that's probably instinctually where they would, um, would go. So from the main homepage here, if you had your students you know, look up a topic, I'm gonna add quotation marks because that tells the database, as Eric knows, <laughs> that um, that looks for those two words in that exact order. So that's just a little, freebie librarian tip for you. Um, any, any kind of search engine knows what that means too. So that limits your search a little bit just to those two words. So this is a way to search uh, one search. So right now, because we only have access to uh, the online collection, we have changed the default uh, results to be available online. So once we go back on campus, God willing, <laughs> we could change that to include DVDs and, and other you know, physical materials as well. So just one thing to keep in mind that this is, is, is hopefully filtering out all the print resources. So um, there are some different ways to filter this search if you are looking for videos. So one of those, I mean, we have over 700,000 results that are coming up here. So that's obviously gonna be you know, too many. You can limit it by material type and that you could, choose videos as the, the limiter there. So that's one way to, to filter through all of those resources to only find videos. Now, the way that we have this set up, because we, we don't have an electronic resources librarian per se, because that it, it takes a little bit extra time to, um, to actually catalog all of the Canopy films because our Canopy collection is, is unique to films that we license and films that are part of a larger collection. So we don't have any Canopy films in this result, um, actually. So this is all content from Films On Demand, which is owned by um, uh, this company called InfoBase. So anytime you see InfoBase coming up in the result, it, it means it's only pulling from that one film database. Uh, we have some other film res resources as well, but th they're not integrated into this catalog because we just don't have the, the person power to do that at this point. So we do have the way to access those databases directly, and that's a lot of times what we end up teaching, but just so you're aware of kind of how that works. So um, all of these say available online. If you wanted to limit it by, you know, subject, the subjects that are attached to these resources, that's one way that you could limit it because this is still, you know, over 500 videos that are on climate change or you could limit it by um, relevance, having the newest ones at the top, or you could limit it by a particular date. So that's one way that you can do that. Those limiters are also available within the individual databases. So I'll show you how to use those, but just so you're aware that you can also kind of fine tune 
your list of results, even just from one search here. So if you have publication date, you can change the date range and then get less results that are more, you know, more recent, for example. Any questions so far? <laughs> All right. So um, if you do choose one of these videos, uh, you can click on the title. Well, actually just a, another little tip here. In our new OneSearch, you can sign in at the top. And when you sign in, it gives you the ability to, to pin videos, to put videos in a list. Um, if you had checked out any physical items, this is also where you can see what a checkout date is. You can renew um, things when things are due, that type of thing. And so that's new to students as well, because we've only really gotten that working um, in the last few months. So you can choose a title from here. And this will provide you some subject headings, hopefully a little description. And then also you can um, access the, the full text availability. So in this case, because it's a video, this will open up in um, at the actual films on demand database. And so from here, what oftentimes we will off put add to, to um, research guides is we can add a permalink so this is one way to link this particular record to you know, an assignment or something. But I'm gonna show you how to integrate the films directly, more directly into Films On Demand. But this is just uh, another way that you could either email it to yourself or you can send yourself a link. Just if you're you know, kind of browsing, doing a little shopping and using one search, one search to do that, you can do that from here too. Um, so I'm gonna open this up just to kind of pop into Films On Demand here. And before we look at the, the video results, what I'm going to be kind of walking you through briefly is I mean, we're, we're already kind of looking at finding resources. We did that through OneSearch. So that's mostly the films on demand content um, from Infobase, as I mentioned. And then in terms of finding videos, um, you can also go directly to uh, one, uh, two films on demand from our A to Z database list. So you can do that from our main homepage by clicking databases and then choosing F for films on demand and then searching the database that way too. That's many times how we use that in, in instruction. Um, but one, the one search is also a way to do that. So that's what's mentioned here. How do I create an account? Um, and that is something that's kind of nice in all of these different resources, as well as the one searches. You can create your own account and you can save content. So if you're planning lessons and modules and you're kind of looking around and researching for possible video clips or full length titles, you can create an account in Films On Demand in order to save those. So there's some steps here on how to create an account. Um, initially, you do need to log into Films On Demand with your Canvas login. So I, I think I have already done that this morning, so it's probably not prompting me in this session, but um, that's usually what um, anyone will see. And then you can locate your profile and then click new user to sign up. So if you haven't done that, um, this is also a really good place um, to kind of set that up. So this takes me directly to the title. Uh, this is a, a multiple segment title here. You can either watch the whole title or you can just watch a segment of it. And that's actually really helpful. And I'll talk a little bit more about segments because I use that in speech classes where the students might just need a clip or even a custom, a custom little 30 second clip to use in a speech. So um, we'll also talk about that too. But what I've already done here is I have created an account and logged in. So it's telling me up here on the right, hi, Sarah. So if you haven't created an account, when you check, when you click that box, it just asks you to create an account. You can use your Citrus College account. And this allows you to, you can even create classes and create custom playlists or custom um, videos for students to watch that are organized by classes if you want. You can give them a different code to kind of go into it and view those. Um, you can also set up your account settings. And this is what I think is most helpful is that, let me see if it's in this section. Oh, this is a little bit more of, of how things are displaying. Let me show you in, it's in my content here. Where is it? Oh, in the profile. When you set it up, when you set up your account in the beginning, um, it asks you to select some subjects. 
And this is very helpful because if you only, if you want to know if there's any new content that's coming out on your subject area or just a subject area that you're interested in, because uh, you can select that here and you will get a monthly newsletter if you check the box here and it will let you know any new titles that have been added to the collection um, each month. So that's usually around the first of the month, first week of the month. And I checked some of these as an example a while ago and I kept and I kept getting the email and I thought, oh, I'm maybe I want to tell everyone that there's all these these um, new titles that are coming out. How do I tell all faculty all these new titles? And then I realized that I'd I'd made this very custom, you know, collection. I checked these different subjects to, to be coming in my email. So usually with those subjects, I get about 100 titles a month and they are unique to those subjects. So. You know, of course, I thought, oh, how do, what happens if I want to check all of them and I want to see all of them, you know, but I think it's better if, if you set up your account for what you want. Um, and then you can get that sent to you and you can adjust that later on if you want. So um, this is really helpful because they has this little um, arrow here and then you can check what subject areas you want to include. So we have communication, we have cosmetology, you know, we have all kinds of different areas here. So you just check like if I wanted to add environmental science or if you wanted to delete one, you could also do that from there too. And then you can check send me monthly new title emails um, based on my subject areas or send me a monthly newsletter and other just important general information from Films on Demand. So I think that's that's just really helpful because it's changing and how would we know if there's some you know really great content. Um, one thing also is that Films on Demand often has many titles and series that are also in Canopy. But we don't have to pay per play in Films on Demand. We just pay one price per year. Even if they add titles, it doesn't cost any, any different besides, you know, like just a minor adjustment that they make each year. Um, but if there is duplication in Films on Demand content and Canopy content, we can ask Canopy to exclude those titles and not show them in Canopy. So if, you, if you've been going to Canopy for, for a certain video and all of a sudden it's gone, <laughs> it might be because uh, we discovered that it's in Films On Demand and we have excluded it from discovery, if that makes sense. It's a little sneaky and I wish I could tell everybody, but I don't know a lot of times who's using what to tell people, oh, hey, you know. But um, what we'll also talk about is ways that you can tell me what you're using so I can make sure that it's accessible to you and that you know where to get it to. So this is super helpful. You get it fed to you and um, then you'll know what's new. There are some benefits here of creating an account in Films on Demand. You can save things, you can create you know, lists. Um, another thing that I think is actually new is you can create quizzes that are connected to videos. And so I was playing with this a little bit and, and um, I made one. It's probably not the best you know, full on example, but um, I, I went to my content here and this is where this is stored when you do create a quiz and I'll show you how to create one, but it just will list your quiz here and then you can do things with it. You can integrate it. So if I have this climate change, what, let me go back to my, actually my results here. And I, I believe all, I don't see why, I don't, I don't think that there's any distinguish between which titles have this option, which don't. I think that this is a, just a function that's um, throughout the database. When you go to a, a collection here, and I have a feeling that this option appears only when you're signed in, when you have a profile, because I oftentimes are in, in viewing this database without being signed in. And that's maybe why I didn't notice it when it first appeared. But you can create a quiz. So I can just create, you know, name the quiz, you know, blah, 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 whatever it's called. And then you can create different kinds of questions uh, based on different moments in the film. Like at this moment, don't let the student view this any longer until they answer this question. And so you can kind of put it at a certain second mark and have it be different kinds of questions. So this is an add a question section here. And so this is actually right where I am. This is the minute and second mark of where I would be. So if I wanted to, you know, watch this for a little bit, I'm going to just forward it a little bit here. You know, so if I was at, you know, whatever, whatever point I'm at, see, so now it knows I'm at this 53 second mark. So I can select an option to have a multiple choice question, check all that apply, 
a short answer or a true or false. So if I have a true or false, you can type the question, whatever the question is, you would try type what the answer is here. And then you can allow them to skip it if you want, or if they don't skip it, then they can't continue. So that's kind of like some of the, the Canvas quiz options as well. You can kind of customize it a little bit. So then I would just say next here, and then I have a true and false question. So I'm going along a little bit more and I'll add another question. You know, maybe I want, uh, you know, check all that apply. Whatever the question is, whatever the answers are, you can type here, you know, and check whatever the answers are. So it's, it's fairly si simple and it's kind of integrated into the films themselves. So as you um, share the actual film with your quiz, with your quiz content, that's going to be unique to you. So it's not the same as sharing the actual just quiz not being logged in or anything. Um, so when you go to your, oh, I think I have to tell it that I'm finished. Did I do that already? Next question. Oh, I, think, I think I told it that was finished here. So when I go to my content, then I have my little made up quiz here. And then I had another quiz that I was working on here too. So you can either share that quiz in the actions portion, you can email it, you can share it. You, and it's probably easier if you get a link to it and you can add that to, to Canvas. So this question, this video here, I have certain port portions where um, there's questions as I go along. I have four different questions here. So if I wanted to share it, I could use the, if I had different classes set up, I guess also share it to a group of, I haven't played with how to set up the classes as much, but you could set up a group here um, if you wanted one class to have a different set of questions than another class. Or you can individually email it, but that seems like that would be a lot of work. There's a little link portion up here. So this is the record URL. So that's unique to, to that specific quiz that you have that's connected to you. So it's gonna be different than just sharing or embedding the film. Does that make sense? I have a question. Yeah. Um, when they take the quiz, what happens to the results? I actually haven't tested that part out yet. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> I was just, wow, I, I, read, I discovered the quiz part of it. Okay. Um, I think it's set up to go, the answers will go to the email that mm. is set up with the account. I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. But, um, and if the student doesn't have their own account, um, it's possible that they may ask for some, you know, information to be added manually. So that, that part I have, I actually honestly haven't played with yet, but I have okay. a feeling it either, it works like they add their own name or, but it emails it to you, I think is kind of the setup. Okay. Either that, or it might actually have it in the content, in your content area. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like an alert, you have like results or something and like it stores results, it in yeah. your profile. It could be like okay. that too. Thanks. Yeah. So that's kind of some of the benefits of creating an account in Films on Demand. Um, some new little tips. It also has um, all kinds of different other little features here. Oh, also um, in terms of, of accessing and, and searching for films in this collection. You can also either use the advanced search if you know that you wanna look for films that have specific terms in them. Um, and it does search the entire transcript for any word that comes up. So it's a pretty you know, large breadth of a search here. So this is one way to, to search. You can choose uh, videos or if there's any custom videos that you wanna search, but just choosing videos is probably okay. And that this will give you a list of results that have to do with um, like, I'm going to just add fake news here. Um, this also allows you to search by different filters. So if you know you want to search by educational films or a lecture or interview or a documentary, um, you can choose the type. You can also make sure that you're searching within certain um, subject collections. This is another way to narrow your search also by producers. So if you know that you wanna find something that's by PBS, there's a lot of PBS content, some HBO content um, in, in films on demand. And also you can do it by copyright date. So if you know you want something that's within the last five, 10 years, then you can also limit it by all of those things. And also films on demand um, primarily does have all closed captioned, but there's a, sometimes new content might not go through the captioning process quite yet. So if you do, um, run across something that is is not captioned. You can also um, 
let me know and I can make sure that they get that caption quicker. I don't find that too much in films on demand. Most of it is, but I think they have this filter. So you can also make sure that you're only searching things that have the closed captioning completed yet. But I think that's usually just for new um, recently added content. Um, some of them also have educator resources, some questions, some activities that go along with it. So you can also limit it by ones that have those resources too. Or things that are just new, newly added. So that's one way to search using the advanced search. Um, one way that I like, especially when students are looking for research topics in your search area, this is another way to browse the menu here, the little three bars on the left-hand side, and you can browse by subjects. Um, there's also a list of popular categories. So there's like the best of HBO, events from history, um, documentaries, et cetera, and then a certain producers. So if you wanna look at all the frontline PBS content, all the HBO content, um, that's another way. There's a lot of TED Talks um, in Films On Demand. It's not exhaustive, it's the entire TED Talks collection, but a lot of those obviously are available for free online, but you will see those integrated into this uh, results too. Um, the subjects are kind of nice. They're, they're very exhaustive. So there are a lot of different subjects, but just to kind of give you a, a, a little sampling, they usually will have a different uh, major category. Like in this case, anthropology, there's 900 titles and then they'll break them down into smaller subsets of collections. So if you wanted to browse, you know, just the um, dance collections, for example, or um, some of the historical, you know, that we also have archives of films and newsreels collection as part of our films on demand collection. We have something called the master academic collection that we pay for. Um, we also pay for a smaller collection uh, for nursing that's part of our films on demand collection. So that's also something that you'll see here, but you can kind of see how these are, are broken down and then you can browse within these smaller subject areas here. But we have a, a little over a thousand titles in the nursing that is a, a separate add-on collection. So this will, will take you into uh, all the titles that are in that collection and then you can kind of filter within there as well. So lots of different kind of ways to, to narrow and filter and search so you don't have to spend a lot of time just kind of randomly searching. But keyword searching, if you know you want to get a certain phrase or a keyword, um, you can also limit it by that, that method too. Any questions about finding videos in Films On Demand? All right. Um, the, the second tab here is Canopy. So I know I've been mentioning that quite a bit and, and, I'll, and I'll kind of highlight that again here in terms of our model. We have a, they call it a PPU, a pay per use model. So that is, um, that's something that we actually recently only changed to in November. We used to have something that was called their, their PDA or their patron, patron driven access. So it used to be where we had access to everything that they provide, which is about 24,000 titles. And that every time someone triggers a title, it would trigger a license to be purchased. And so triggers involve, oh, you know what? I don't have it handy, but I think it's like, uh, four different users over a 12 month period watching something for 30 seconds. Like there's certain little magical things that will trigger a license to be purchased. Like this is getting used enough and then we would just pay for those. So that was actually okay. And it wasn't too, too much. Uh, we didn't think, and that was manageable and we had some expected use, but we, um, one of our um, part-time librarians uh, was able to discover and look a little bit deeper at the usage. And she discovered that that was actually a much more expensive way to do that, where the triggers, there might be four people over 12 months that just looked at something for 30 seconds and, and didn't want to, didn't want to do anything with it. It wasn't an assignment. They were just kind of curious. So we were paying for licenses after, you know, four people a year would just kind of watch a little bit of something. So that um, was very costly, actually. It did give us access to everything, um, but we discovered this pay-per-use model where it was $2 a play and that um, things would, um, we could choose which titles we wanted to license. So if we knew something was going to get used, we would purchase a license and then everything else would just be $2 per play. So we changed to that and we actually saved about 50% immediately. <laughs> it was actually very, very helpful. And um, 
and then and then the pandemic started so <laughs> so the two dollars a pledge kind of cranked cranked up a notch a little bit so um one of the things that other librarians around the state were were trying to entertain is how to to manage that so we know what do you want how can we have access to it so it isn't that you know all 150 of your students are doing two dollars a play on a title that we have not licensed and the license may only cost 120 dollars but we have you know some titles there's like 800 views on it and that would be just two dollars a view <laughs> so um, one idea that we had is to um, send out this email to everybody i think we did this in i feel like the end of end of spring or maybe the mid i don't know springish uh, so we have this canopy license film license request form and this is still evolving we're trying to we're just trying to figure out a way to make this manageable and so right now because most of the titles um, are 120 dollars some of them are a little bit more some of them are a little bit less now they're kind of adjusting their own models based on what's going on right now too um, is we have asked everybody send us if there's a title that you're going to use in a 12 month period that 60 or more students are going to watch, then we will purchase the license for $120. And then you can have, you know, 500 students watch that in a year and it still will only cost us $120. So that was just a way of, of, of saving money. And we've been asked in the library to save um, um, really, really um, <laughs> Save us wherever we can. <laughs> Save everything. Yeah, there there have been times when we 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 pay a hundred dollars a year for something and we have had to cut it because that was too expensive. That's kind of the point that we're at. So even though this might seem petty, <laughs> that's just that's just what's happening. So and we're not alone. I mean, other librarians and other colleges are having the same same experience. So we um, just have this form where we're asking you, you know, who who are you? What are you using this film for? Are you going to use it with sixty or more students? Um, what are the films? And and, and many of our films we have um, uh, for for lots of different subject areas. Um, primarily, we have child development. Child development was using a lot of our films um, for, for instruction, which is great. Um, so this is good that we were able to buy some licenses, a lot of sociology, a lot of history titles. Um, so this is just, you know, also an opportunity to ask you, have you looked in films on demand to see if this film is there? And we will always double check this too, because sometimes films on demand will, will change what they, what they include in the collections. They're both kind of dynamic collections a little bit. But um, this just helps us get an idea of what you need so we can plan ahead and try to make sure that we can um, get that in time for you to need it. And most people have gotten, uh, have gotten that message, um, but I, we do have usage. Uh, we do check the usage. We have um, Tina Gutierrez who is checking that usage on a regular basis, usually multiple, at least once a week, if not multiple times a week to look for spikes in titles. So she will let me know, hey, there's this title and it's getting use right now. Like who's using it? So it's not the most ideal setup right now, but we are oftentimes kind of chasing around titles. Like who, who's using this? Do you need this a lot? Or is this gonna, should we try to catch it before it gets too many plays? So um, there are some other models of how to, how to deal with the, that kind of thing. So we're not chasing things around so much, but we're, we're trying this out for, for the rest of this year. And then we might change to a different model, but that's kind of where, where we're at here in terms of, of the licensing. So any questions about the canopy licensing so far? You know, that's kind of maybe something, the money part of it's not something that most people are, are aware of, but. Um, so in canopy, you can also create an account. So it works a little bit different than films on demand. I have a, a, a login tutorial actually that I've created because the login is not quite as direct because we use this pay-per-view situation we it tracks how many people are viewing each title so there has to be some other kind of like person like individual level login for this so not just a, a, a citrus college uh, student or staff so we have a, a step by step on how to get to canopy and then also what you'll see when you get there so you get this um, section that asks you to log into citrus college so that will then prompt our regular canvas login and then it will ask you to create a separate account. And you can actually create this with any kind of email or even a Google or a Facebook account, but it really is just trying to track um, your usage. We would suggest using your Citrus College account just so all those things are kind of linked together, but we don't have any, we don't have any history or who's watching what or anything like that. But um, 
this is just a way for it to track that in that pay-per-view model that we have. And then it just asks you to verify your email account. So you just have to respond to that message and then um, it will give you access. And you, and you can also save, you know, put videos on a watch list. You can kind of save things just like with films on demand, you can kind of um, save them for later and that type of thing. Um, but that's kind of how, how that works with, with creating an account with Canopy. So there's some different benefits here as well. And then also, fun fact, we've also discovered, Elizabeth was really good at helping discover this because she has some public library experience. <laughs> but, um, and also as a, as a LA County library user myself, um, more digitally than some of the print collections, uh, the, the public libraries also have access to Canopy. It is not the same Canopy collection there's some small differences, like the Criterion Collection, for example, has more titles in the academic library collections than they do in the public library. Public library has more children's titles, that kind of thing. So, um, but that's one thing that you can do is, is access Canopy through your public library or encourage your students to create a public library account if they haven't already, which is beneficial for all kinds of different reasons um, to access it through there. And then we don't have to pay for it. So, and I even talked to my canopy rep and she's like, well, you could just do that. So anyway, don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but you know, when, when you're getting to where you might have to cancel with them because you can't afford it, that's, that's a, a way to supplement and make it sustainable, at least for now. So um, there is some links here to create a digital library card through the LA County. And also Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, because we did a little video on, which is also right here actually, uh, San Bernardino City we did. City Libraries, LA County, and I think it was oh. yeah, I think San Bernardino County. I want to say because um, that was where the majority of our students lived. And if you are in, if you live in LA proper, you can do LA Public as well. But you know, not many of our students are in LA City proper, so LA County seems to be the best bet at this moment. So Elizabeth has um, also made a short video here on the left-hand side of this guide that's how to create a, uh, a canopy or also, or just how to create a public library card, which will also get you access to Hoopla, which is another collection that I'll show you uh, briefly. But um, that is also just kind of a fun fact. And um, canopy, whether you log into it from the Citrus College account or, whether from, or from the public library account, it's also something that you can have it as an app on your phone, as well as films on demand, but on, um, uh, on like smart TVs, there's also a Canopy app where you can, you know, push your remote control on a TV, log into Canopy and watch the films on a regular television as well. So that's all obviously an option too, in terms of viewing it. And our Canopy um, uh, and analytics show what devices people watch the films through. It just has a, and also what countries they watch them from too, which is also kind of interesting. Like if they're in another country watching it, we don't get too many, but there are some students I think that are, taking classes um, that are outside the United States. Um, and yeah, a lot of gaming consoles, you can also watch Canopy through or mobile devices as well as laptops or desktops. It kind of breaks it down and shows you where people are watching it. But a lot of students are watching it on their mobile devices. As we know, many of them are taking Canvas classes on their, their cell phones. So um, we try to keep that in mind. All right, so 3C Media Solutions is also a a kind of a, a blank slate. It's a portal where, um, where you can actually create an account and upload content to it. Um, you do need to be able to upload content that, that we have, that you have a license to be able to upload also. Um, but this is a, a something that is available to all community colleges. You do need to create your own account. So there's information on how to create an account. Anyone can register for it. You use your Citrus College email account. And then there's also benefits of doing this where you can store media. So some people have created a, like a recording of a, a lecture, for example, you can save that in uh, multiple places, but 3C Media is one of those. You can also save them to YouTube and have it be unlisted or private and only show it through that method or use Canvas and Canvas Studio to create content and to share it through there as well. But this also does have some captioning features in it. And if you do have a some licensed content that doesn't have captions, you can also submit it to be captioned. And I know that Sonia might know a little bit more about this too. I know that the funding for some of that has been affected obviously because a lot of the content that, that people need captioning for 
um, is, is there's only a certain amount of, of funding for that as well. But I just submitted something that someone needed and I just thought, I don't know if they're gonna have money for it. And I submitted it and it got captioned. So that was really helpful. Um, so this is unlimited free cloud storage for community college instructors specifically. And it does have a file size limit of one gigabyte. So it can't be something that's like gigantic. So if you do have something large that you'd have to compress into a smaller size, you can upload it through there. Um, this is what uh, Canopy or what, what 3C Media looks like. It has lots of instructional informational videos as well on how to use different things. Um, and in our, this is one thing that I have discovered more because I had some, a lot of instructors that wanted to use DVDs or other resources that we um, may or may not have digital licenses to that I was able to acquire digital licenses, um, even for something that we had in a DVD, we can't automatically just uh, digitize it and store it here. We have to get a license to have it digitally available. So that's another whole workshop on digital licensing. But um, I was able to acquire some licenses for some different titles and make them available um, through this portal here. So that's some, some information that I thought was kind of helpful. You can have a description of it and you can also um, link to it. You can have it be password protected and you can embed it into Canvas as well. So that's kind of its own complicated <laughs> thing too, but just in, the, in general. Oh yeah, see, I had, I had a little captioning request. I uploaded a video and then I asked, I had them um, caption it. And so I have some information there for it. But you, you would upload your videos and if you have a caption file, you can also upload the caption file separately. Sometimes you can acquire, um, when you acquire digital licensing, they'll also give you a caption file. So lots of new things that I have learned that I did not know about. And when I worked with the media librarian at uh, San Francisco City College, I realized that she was the media librarian and that's what all of what she did is just this little niche kinds of things. So it was really interesting to, to learn from her as well. So that's 3C Media. There is a way to, let me see if I can just show an example really quick of the, so this is the content that I've uploaded. And then if I wanted to share it, you can post it, you can list it. Um, and then you, it has a sharing link here, or you can embed it. So there's a way to also embed that code into Canvas. Um, but it doesn't have a way to integrate it in the way that Films on Demand does, which I will show you a little bit more about. But there's some of the embed information there. So if you have something that you want to put on 3C Media and you want some assistance with it, I think also um, Sonia might be a good resource for that as well. I'm not sure how much Chong has, has uh, involvement in 3C Media, but um, I'm sure we have other resources. I'm, this is something I'm really just learning a little bit more about. I'm not an expert by any means there. So any questions about 3C Media? All right. Um, we do have a collection of videos um, provided through Swank Digital Campus. This is something you probably haven't heard of because <laughs> we uh, it's, it's limited only to a select uh, students that are in a certain class which is not generally what, how we would normally go about um, resources in the library, but because the, our funding is so limited, the funding for, for Swank titles um, is, is kind of pricey. <laughs> and because it was mostly for uh, students that are in the film appreciation course, I can't remember the, I think it's, I can't remember exactly the title of the course, but it's Art 199. Um, the, the, the visual performing arts department agreed to, to pay for the 25 titles that we're able to get through Swank. So unfortunately, I, I wish because it is available to everybody that I could make it, but because of how it's funded and it, it also is going to be funded by, by student fees for the class that are going to help, help offset the cost of it. So because of those things, it's kind of limited to those students with, with very minor exceptions. So, um, so that's why there's not a link to Swank on our A to Z databases um, or listed here. But just so you're aware, um, that is something that's, that I, I have learned about because we had a lot of instructors, like an entire course where they were relying on the DVDs to watch them in class. So 
this is something that we were able to, to help provide. We did get a sampling of this um, in, they had a deal that they were doing for the pandemic that was um, a very affordable deal. So we kind of got to try it out a little bit and we realized that that would work for the coming um, terms where this was needed. So students still would access this with their Canvas credentials um, just through their course um, individually, most likely. And then if there's an art instructors who would like to add titles to it, they can um, discuss that with Katie as well um, in order to, to um, add those titles to that collection. And we made sure that those are titles that are not available in Canopy or Films on Demand. These are titles that are really only available through Swink. Um, but they do, in those classes, they do use a lot of Canopy films as well. So we're, we're paying for some Canopy for them and they're paying for some of the Swink. But um, those things are available. So I'm learning about some of these new media resources as well. And then Hoopla, we, we um, briefly talked about the public library, but Hoopla is another collection that's available through um, your LA County Public Library. And also some of the city libraries have their own Hoopla uh, account. So this is also has some children's collections. And if you have children or you wanna watch just other feature films are also available in Hoopla. Some of that content is available Canopy and some of it is, is only available in Hoopla. So I have logged into this already, and this is under LA County. If you're using a different li public library card, you could use that, but this is purely a, a public library type collection. So it's not, it's not even created to be uh, meant for academic libraries, but there are a lot of, uh, they, they have films as well as TV shows and also eBooks and audiobooks that are through Hoopla. So you can browse the different collections here. I also find um, sometimes in English, students are looking for a play or an, an ebook version of a book that we can't afford. They can also borrow it uh, from this collection too. So that's another option. We try to buy any ebooks that we can for the different students. So this is just, you know, you can just search for it basically uh, and find, and you can usually check them out for, I wanna say, Oh, this has a limit on eight titles per month also. So there's some limit, it's not unlimited. And I think each title is about seven days. Elizabeth, does that make sense? Do the movies, have you used those very often? I can't remember. I have not used the movies very often. I know books are three weeks. Three weeks for books? For books, yeah. Okay, this is just a random sampling here. If I borrowed this, let me see. Oh, oh two days it looks like. <laughs> So, and it, this one has it for, it looks like mobile devices only for some reason on this particular one. And that might vary from title to title, um, but yeah. So, and that might be the number of days might vary from title to title based on the, on the production companies too. That could actually, I don't know that I would say that that's for everything. They have a lot of licensing. They got a lot of hands in the licensing for things, but there is, there isn't um, that you can create an account, um, you don't have to create it, use a Citrus email. This is totally outside of Citrus, just another option as ways to get um, content. And there's even, you know, language learning content for different languages uh, and, you know, all kinds of different things. You never know what you're gonna find there, but it's primarily for like a public general audience, not as much academic, so you never know. All right. And then uh, lastly, just in terms of finding things, uh, we do have, uh, I, there's a lot of questions that I get about, you know, can I use Netflix and all of that good stuff, which I can also speak to a little bit, but um, Netflix does have a, a collection of films that they do make available to educators to use in the classroom. There's not that many, but they are openly licensed and available um, through YouTube. They have their own Netflix YouTube um, channel. So they have a link here to a list of all of their documentaries and films. Uh, this is the, the channel where all of them are listed and that there's no login required. You don't have to have Netflix. Um, and these are also available. And a lot of these also have educational resources that go with them. They're, they're meant to be used in an instructional content. And because these are from YouTube, you can also search for them in Canvas and embed them. Um, which is the other section that I'm going to talk about next with apparently only half an hour. I wasn't sure how long this is going to take, but <laughs> so thanks for hanging in there um, or for forwarding through if you're, if you're watching it. Yeah. What'd you say? Oh, just... 
Oh yeah, I just want to raise my hand. I just wanted to comment too, um, in terms of like Netflix and things. I know not necessarily educational, um, but if you are showing your students movies and things like that, there are free movie sites as well that just are ad based, like Tubi and IMDb TV. And occasionally we found things that have instructors have requested there. And those, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know licensing, but I think you can just, you know, send the link to your students. They're on a free streaming site. So you can just send that out, I think. There's no like sign in or anything. Yeah, the free ones, and I'll show you a website that I've I learned about too that has links to all of those different places. And I think it's called, is it just oh justwatch.com? Uh, this is all also where uh, one of the tools that we use when someone's asking us for a video that we can't find in our other portals. It doesn't show if it's available in every single like subscription type of service, but it does a lot of the popular subscriptions. So if I wanted to look at, oh my goodness, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's oh like the social dilemma, for example, that a lot of people ask me about. Yes, <laughs> I don't think that this one is available yet, so this might not be the best example, but. Um, but yes, what, what they'll ultimately show is all of the different streaming platforms where that is available. This one, unfortunately, is Netflix has got the lockdown on that, is not an educational title, unfortunately, though I agree it should be. <laughs> um, so I definitely recommend it for an extra credit assignment, perhaps, for students that do have access to that. But um, oh, I didn't think of a, let's see, somebody was asking me for, if you, if you look up a title, there was an actually another speech instructor that was asking me about this title that they were relying on a DVD for. So um, there's just an example of kind of what this looks like when there's a lot of other options. So this will show you um, Canopy is one of the things that's listed here usually, if it's available in Canopy or if it's available for Hoopla, this is, this is where you might see a Hoopla listing but this is also some other options that are subscription based. So these are, would be completely separate on a student's or, or on a rental basis. So you could rent something or there's also buy options, but this would link you directly to wherever that's available to rent. If it's available in Canopy, Canopy it will say subs like subscription, or if it's um, through, through Hoopla, it'll say subs. But there are some that are completely free. This one doesn't happen to have free options, but there are some that, you know, have ads like I think Tubi is the one that T-U-B-I that has ads so it's paid for by somebody but it is a, it's sometimes a way to to watch something too yeah fun facts that's a something there but yeah this is the list of the Netflix educational films that was just posted in April actually so the 13th crucial film, very relevant to lots of different um, social issues that are happening right now. Um, abstract, there's some art related films. Um, there's about 10 on this title. Babies, which is something that I, I told a lot of the child development instructors about, psychology, looking at you know how, how babies grow. Chasing Coral, a lot of the explained episodes, um, not all the episodes, but there's a whole bunch of the, you know, there's a topic that's just explained in a little snappy method. I also had a, this is not a Netflix thing. Actually, it kind of is. There's a teacher who was um, having the students watch episodes of, um, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a show that was just canceled. It's a comedian. What's his name? Uh, and he does like the Patriot Act and he, the Hassan Minaj show? Yeah, Hassan Minaj. Hassan, and there, yeah. There's a lot of those and they're they take one topic and they kind of explain it. There is a little bit of language. It's, you know, mature content, but the teacher was using that as a place for, for people to use that, to look at the arguments and to look at how someone's bringing in different um, sides of an issue. And a lot of those were available. I, I was worried at first that maybe the teacher was referring to them to something that wasn't legal or something, but the Netflix does have select episodes of certain shows like that where um, you can view them, not all of the episodes, but many of them. But anyway, so, so this is one uh, source. The Netflix list here, uh, their YouTube channel has the list of, they have like a playlist kind of thing going. So that's up Our Planets, there's a lot of environmental content. Uh, so there's 
full episodes of many of these different things. Here's 13th, knock down the house, um, period, end of sentence. So all kinds of different topics here that you could use. So that link is, is embedded in the guide that, you'll, that I'll send you afterwards, but you can also go to just the Netflix educational documentaries channel is where they store that information. So yeah, lots of good stuff, some free stuff out there. So that was, that was just finding stuff. <laughs> the only other part that I, I want to end with is just the section on embedding, because I know that there's, there's lots of stuff in here. Um, uh, but in terms of embedding, some of these uh, content collections are not able to be embedded. So not all of those have the option. And we talked a little bit about, oh, don't you like our new little, what do they call it, intrusive support? <laughs> Everywhere you go on our website, Elizabeth hooked us up with this. Do you need help? Hi, there's a librarian waiting for you. <laughs> and if I click chat now, Elizabeth's on the on chat right now, so she'd be able to answer you. <laughs> it's the same thing that say. the, the um, Citrus College homepage does too. They got the little hootie owl. Yeah, but they have automated responses that are trying to guess your questions on there, which are very oh. helpful. Oh. And they, they link you to. Live people here, and it's okay. just the two of us. <laughs> all right, all right. Important distinction. My my apologies. <laughs> it's very helpful though. No 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 uh, shade on the hoodie for sure. I use it actually to answer questions because I don't you know sometimes I gotta find what's out there. Okay, so um, embedding videos. So you found something, and embedding it uh, is another uh, step to that. So I do have a video here on how to embed films on demand into Canvas specifically. So there are detailed steps here. I'm gonna show you the video, it's only three minutes and it's a little easier than me trying to, to walk through it, but there is a way to embed an entire video. So some of the videos are you know 20 minutes, some of them are an hour and a half, or you can embed just a segment. So as we were looking at films on demand before, it might be just that you wanna show them a five minute segment on something or a couple different segments, not a whole entire video. Um, so there are some ways that you can use this little, uh, this little V, it's the more tools um, icon in Canvas to embed um, the link, or you can embed the whole entire video kind of into to Canvas in an assignment or a module. Um, you can also create a segment. If you have created an account, you can, oh, that's the full title of the segment. And then you can also create a custom segment, which is the one of the things I've showed the speech classes. And I do have a speech guide where I kind of walk uh, the students how to create their own account. And you can create a custom segment that starts at a certain second timestamp and ends at a certain timestamp. And you save that as just a URL. And then you can embed that URL into a PowerPoint or into a presentation or something like that. So um, I'll show you that guide as well, but these instructions would ultimately work for that as well. You can also create a playlist in Films On Demand, a series of different films that are maybe from, you know, different clips that are from different films and you have a series of things you want them to watch on a certain topic. You can also embed the playlist itself. So there are steps to do that. As as well. So let me show you this just three minute video. I hope, I think the audio should work. So let me test this out, make sure you can hear this. Can you hear the audio on that? Okay, a little bit. I mean, I'll turn it up. I don't know if that helps <laughs> on my end or your end. About how to import films on demand videos into your Canvas course. I've opened up an assignment. You can create a module or an announcement or a discussion board um, and give it a title. In the rich text editor here, there is an icon with a V here. So this is an option that's called more external tools. You have several different options of things that you can import. One of them is films on demand. There are some other library resources as well listed at the bottom here. If you click on films on demand, you can search by keyword, or if you know the title of a film that you'd like to import, you can search for the title of the film. You have some options in your results list. One of them is to preview the video, and another is to embed. 
So this title here, the F word, is the title that I'm looking for, and I would like to embed it. There are two different ways that you can embed it with a record URL, or um, you can embed the actual video um, into the, the box. So the record URL is just a URL here that you can copy and paste into your assignment um, and use as a hyperlink. This is also the same URL that you can get if you go directly to the database in Films On Demand and click Share and Embed Link, and you can copy the record URL from there. Doing it this way in Canvas saves you some steps, but essentially that is the same feature. Uh, so I'm not going to do that for this example, but I am going to embed a small version of the video. So that looks like this. It pops it right into the box. If you wanted to use uh, the embed link and you copied it, then you can add some text instead of the box. I'm going to use both examples here just since we're all here together in the same box. Uh, I'm going to insert a link to the URL and you can paste the URL that way. So you can do one or the other. You don't really need to do two. It's a little redundant. So one or the other would be okay. As long as whatever parameters you want for the assignment and then click save, then your students will be able to directly click on the, the either the video or the link, depending on how you want it to, to display. And that is how you embed a Films On Demand video into your Canvas course. Any questions? <laughs> I was happy to see Eric's Eric's wow face. He was like, wow. I love that. I love I that never, feature. I never clicked on that little, like there's so many, obviously in any given platform, there's so many little things that you can sit and explore. And if you've got a pile of papers sitting there, you, you don't think to click on every little thing, but obviously maybe there's a benefit to, <laughs> to exploring those things but yeah yeah and we're able to um we're able to add to these uh with our different databases so we do a youtube you can in, embed those those netflix for educators there or any other youtube video that you find uh, we have our films on demand content it's kind of set up um, chong set it up so we can just embed that there um, you also have these other, you know, 3C Media. If you do have an account through 3C Media, you can also embed a video from your own collection there. You log into it and authenticate and embed it there. Um, and then we also have our Gale eBooks and Opposing Viewpoints, which we use for all kinds of classes, especially those that are doing any kind of argument. And especially, I know, Eric, you use that with other classes. And I use that with speech classes a ton. Opposing Viewpoints is the it's got opposing viewpoints, different, uh, and, and also just the wide variety of, of you know, formats, academic journals, websites, statistics, audio content, all kinds of great stuff. Um, so, and also it looks like you can embed um, Teams meetings as well, which I think a lot of teachers are now starting to use um, Teams as, as part of using it for group work and other things like that. But yeah, definitely a, a handy thing that you can embed right into it. And, and you could do the same thing uh, going to the database and embedding it, but you can see it just saves you some steps, that's all. So that's how to embed a Films On Demand video title, a segment, um, creating a, a custom segment. Actually, while I am talking about segments really quick, I don't know if I added a, <clears throat> I'm gonna put an example on here. Let me show you really quick our speech. Um, I have a speech page when I was working with um, another speech instructor here, I added a speech page. I think it was in, I don't know if I put it in the regular one or if I just have it in this one. Yeah. In the Speech 101 guide, I have a streaming media tab. This was one that I made that was unique to Tasha Van Horn, a, a Tasha Van Horn assignment, but it, all of the content would, would be helpful as for other classes as well. But I had some, some um, instructions here, how to create an account, make a custom clip. And then essentially what it gives you is a little clip like this, but this is a 28 second clip that's always something when I would work with Melanie Anson's speech classes, I would present to her classes as an example of an informative speech. 
uh, no pressure that my presentation was something that they all commented on, <laughs> not to me, but to her afterwards. So I learned that when the students would come to the library afterwards, like, oh yeah, we talked about how you did this and that and this and that in your speech. And I thought, oh, okay, good to know. Um, but I always play this little clip um, because all you have to do is get a URL. So as long as you're somewhere where you can play that URL, whether the teacher's watching a speech presentation from Canvas or the students presenting in class, um, they would just click the link and this is just a short, a short link to um, just a custom segment. So this is actually from a segment that's longer, but this is my shortened version of it. question on camera what's your number one fear what do you mean what's your number one fear what are you afraid of anything bothering you over there? for me yeah nothing at all nothing nothing at all what do you think the number one fear is for the majority of people what are we afraid of i don't know because i never afraid i say nothing no nothing no. <laughs> not even the line bring me a line i'd bite it yeah. I, I swear to god yeah. Yeah. that was like a little part of a like a statistic also but right before that where they're discussing you know, people are more afraid of public speaking than death, statistically, apparently. <laughs> so that's just a way to show like a little custom clip too, especially if students are doing a, a presentation. Um, so if Canopy does, does not have that option, however, you can uh, use the embed link from a Canopy film and uh, link that into Canvas, the same way you would just insert a URL into Canvas. So that's kind of how that that works here using the embed tab or embed code. You can use embed code to make the video pop up or just the URL. So it's same, same options, but it doesn't have a LTI function within Canvas to have it be in that more tools dropdown. So it's not listed there because it doesn't have that functionality. It should for how much we, we use it these days. <laughs> Um, 3C Media Solutions um, does have that, that embed option. We saw that when we, um, we were looking at the example real quick, just using that more tools. Um, Swank is not something that has that capability and, and only the limited uh, faculty are using that at this time, but that does not, it just has a URL that you could link to. Um, also Hoopla doesn't have uh, an embed option, but it does have a link. So you can, um, you can insert a link. And as long as someone has, you can encourage your students as, a, as an assignment to sign up for a free digital library card. You go to Hoopla, get the link for the video. I don't know if I have my Hoopla thing up here still. Um, and then if anyone clicks it, it'll go right to the video if they're already logged into their Hoopla account. So it's essentially works the same way, but their login would just be different. And then Netflix has an embed feature, same way you can embed it into Canvas. Um, and be because it's there's no login required, it would just be able to play it in there. Well, that was way easier for that section than I thought. But <laughs> but obviously, you can see there's there are a lot of other you know features to this in terms of of copyright and licensing and digital licensing. Uh, we we do. Um, have the ability to inquire about purchasing digital licenses. We've done that for a lot of instructors this um, that while we've been off campus. So if we can purchase the license either through de department funds or through the library funds, then we can make those available through 3C Media, or we can um, provide the instructor with just a separate uh, login type of link that they can get access to. But it usually has to be something that's password protected because many of the digital licenses that we have purchased are, are they're about $300 each. And that's for, you know, for distribution to be used in a, in a classroom setting. Um, one thing that I'll, I do, I will mention that's under this copyright licensing section, uh, because we did get a lot of questions about, can I stream my Netflix through you, through Zoom, and can I show, you know, can I just watch it together as a class and record it? And, and, and maybe you've already discovered this, but it has uh, license restrictions in the films where it will oftentimes not display in a situation like that as well. So they do have um, agreements in their terms of use agreements for those, um, those subscription services. It does restrict you from using it in that purpose. So if for some reason you are able to just know that that's not, that would be going against the, the licensing agreements. So there's a lot more information about, about that here in terms of subscription services like Hulu and Amazon Prime. 
Um, I have had instructors in the past who, who had like an HBO Go subscription and they really wanted to use episodes from a certain TV show for something. And I contacted HBO and asked them and I have in writing that they were okay with that person showing it in a physical classroom setting. And so that would, that's, there are sometimes exceptions like that, as long as we can secure rights for, for this kind of setting, um, there are some accommodations for that. So there's some, a little bit more information about that here, but usually in the contracts, it is um, highlighted that they restrict, uh, you know, individual subscriptions to, pri subscriptions to private non-commercial use only explicitly prohibited screening in classroom for public performances. So even films that we wanted to, you know, to show on campus to a large group, we have to, we have to purchase the DVD with the public performance rights many times as well. So this is kind of a, a brave new world for us and we're all learning a lot. I'm learning about all kinds of things that have to do with streaming media. And I just wanted to, to share some of that information with you. Um, there are like, uh, like Elizabeth mentioned too with that justwatch.com, there are other um, sources, open streaming videos that are on the web. This is actually a custom search engine where you can search for videos and they'll pull from any existing things that are free and available. It might be pointing you toward a subscription service that we don't have also too, um, but um, there are also some, some additional resources on this page that you're welcome to kind of play with. Those are all sources that I, I got from, from this adapted guide. So there are um, different categories here if you wanted to explore any of those. And there's a lot of content like, you know, PBS Frontline, a lot of that content, even though it's in Films on Demand, it's available through the PBS. So of people on, you know, a lot of digital depositories and government websites. I know Senya found something recently on the National Archives or somebody else, maybe it wasn't Senya, somebody was looking for something that was in a National Archive collection that was publicly available. So, um, if you're looking for something in Canopy, it might be good to search other places first and then also, you know, make sure that it's not um, there. But if you are using something that's in Canopy, um, please let us know. And even if you're not using it with 60 students, it's, it's good for us to know that maybe you're only going to use it for 25 and that when the 25 start using it, that we don't start, oh, is it going to be <laughs> more than, <laughs> I think I might reword the, the form to say just anything that you're going to use, let us know. So then when we start seeing it, we know that it's for you and that we know that that it's gonna be um, under the, the total amount for licensing. Um, but that is, is kind of what I wanted to, to share with you today. Thank you for hanging in there. I know it's a lot of information. I, hopefully it's helpful for you, or if you're, you know, those of you who are here, if you're watching the recording, I mean, if anybody has questions about anything or you're looking for a film or looking for, you don't even, you know, have a title and you're looking for something that's on a certain subject, you know, we can help we can help you. We love finding stuff. That's our, that's our thing. You probably know that already, but, <laughs> but it's fun. We like it. We like a, a good hunt. Does anyone have any questions? Right. I guess for now we can stop the recording. Elizabeth, can you help me stop? Well, the recording? I think so. There we go.